Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today we've got some pretty cool news concerning Mr. Hells Yes. So we now have the public release version of the Super Nintendo FPGA Core. That's what I'm going to be showing you guys today, showing you how to install it, what you need to do, and then quickly testing it out. We previously showcased the Super Nintendo Core on Mr., but it was like an early, not public release version. So today we're going to take a look at that. So what we're gonna need to do, make sure you have your SD card ready. Um, tomorrow, actually, I'm gonna be uploading a video for those of you who are new to Mr. on how to get everything set up. A, a pretty much just a simple guide to show you how easy this is to get your, your DE10 Nano, have that micro SD card, get it set up for Mr., get some cores thrown on there and get started gaming. So I'm gonna do a little simple guide on that tomorrow. So. Hey, come back to this if you haven't already started, but if you've already got into this, this is what we need to do. So I'm gonna put the links in the description to both of uh, the things you need to grab. One is gonna be the Super Nintendo Core. As you see, we are dated for the, uh, the 29th of November, brand new, just dropped 10 hours ago, right? <laughs> so pretty sweet. We're gonna have to grab that. You'll just go ahead and click it, uh, click download, and it'll show up wherever you download things to, right? Other thing we're going to need to do is to get the newest uh, release of the uh, the Mr. file here, also dated for today, 1129. Download that as well. So from there, we're going to go ahead and open up our uh, SD card. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to replace this file. So these are the downloads. Already got them going. I'm going to go ahead and throw that on there, delete that one, remove the date, And that part's done. That's a very small file, 262 kilobytes. Take you a second to download. Now, depending upon how you have your card, uh, you know, formatted as far as folders and stuff like that, you can just throw the Super Nintendo one onto the root of the SD card. But the way this is set up, it's set up by systems, you know, all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and go into console and throw in the latest Super Nintendo core. So there we go. I removed the previous version. Um, you could leave it on there if you want to test it, you know, whatever. But I removed it and put the latest one on there because I'm, I'm always trying to get the latest releases. There's always so much going on that it's, it's, it's a little tough to keep up at times. That's why I follow uh, Smoke Monster, always keeping tabs on that stuff, the little classic gaming uh, Discord channel and things like that to try to keep up the tab on all the latest news with this stuff. So... You can always, you know, jump around, get those newest versions of the course and update your stuff. And we will be talking about that a little more in detail for tomorrow's video. So we now have our SD card ready to play Super Nintendo games. I do have, uh, let's see, where's my Super Nintendo games at? So I do have a folder with a US release games on it. So we'll go ahead and test a couple of those out. So we're going to go ahead and remove the SD card, pop it back into the mister and check out some games, so let's do it. All right, guys, we've got the Mr. booted up with our brand new Super Nintendo core ready to go. So I have these in directories, got all the cores ready to go. Here's our new Super Nintendo core, you see the date. I always leave the dates on the cores just so I know if I have the freshest version. I don't for everything right now, but hey, it's nice to leave that on there so you can update without, uh, you know, accidentally updating for no reason or getting confused which version you have. So let's go ahead and load that up um, and find a game. So when I previously tested the uh, the non-public release, the games that I showed on, on, you know, on video, I didn't have any issues with, but I did find some issues with other games, you know, after the fact or just stuff that I didn't record. And one of those games in particular had some graphics glitches the second you loaded the game up. And I'm going to check that one out because for these to go public, they're pretty much show ready. Doesn't mean that they're perfect. It just means they're ready for the public, that there's no like crazy glaring stuff right now. It's an ever evolving project. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, people are, you know, they'll find bugs or little issues and report them, uh, you know, on the GitHub or through other means. And they'll get corrected over time. You know, it just depends on... You know, the, the time that people have to dedicate this, the people who are working on those cores, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, 
the, the previous version, I didn't have too many issues, so it was pretty good. But let's check out a Hagane. I think this is a pretty cool game. One of those ones that are expensive as hell if you're, you know, an authentic collector. You buy real cartridges. This is one that I would recommend, like, hey, if you must have an authentic cartridge, get the Japanese version. Because there's very little text in the game other than um, the, 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 the level names. That's pretty much it. Same game, it's authentic, and it's a fraction of the price from the U.S. release, which is just crazy. Japanese cartridge is going up in price, too, but not anywhere near the U.S. version. So let's go ahead and check this out a little bit. We'll check out the other game uh, that I was talking about and that I had some issues with. I'm really curious to see if those things were ironed out uh, because it was a game I really wanted to play and just was kind of disappointed. But I kind of I understood it wasn't a public ready core and, you know, it was fine. You know, there, there was things that were still being worked on with it and it was, you know, it wasn't ready for everybody to mess with. So there's that. So far, I mean, the audio that I get out of everything, everything's been looking and sounding good. Um, the one thing I do want to point out is I do have this set to 1080p right now. All my other previous videos, any games that I showcased, they were 720. Now there's, you know, some stuff with 1080p and I know that uh, I've been mentioning I was going to do a quick tutorial on that. And I'm actually just going to incorporate that footage into my guide video that I'm going to be uploading. Like I said, uh, tomorrow my next uh, Mr. Video is just going to be the basic setup to get people started. And I will explain the uh, 1080p configuration as well in that video just to kind of keep everything together instead of doing multiple videos. You know, there's really no point in doing, you know, a, a, a guide on getting it set up and then doing another one that takes like two minutes you know, maybe two or three minutes to just showcase um, setting the 1080p. So that'll just be part of that video. So look forward to that if you're interested um, and you, you're you really, you know, wanting to look into getting into Mr. So, okay, I'm sucking at this game because I'm talking and doing other things at the same time. Let's go ahead and load up another game real quick. Uh, what, what do we got here? So right now, you know, there's still work to be done. Uh, special chip games. You know, we have to wait for that, see what's going on with that kind of stuff. Um, but the vast majority of the system, the games for the Super Nintendo are not special chip games. There's a lot of them that are, and they're really good games. So definitely understood if, if you're disappointed that they don't work as of yet. But hey, eventually, you know, with all these cores being, you know, brought into the SD2, SNES, you know, the work's being done. I'm hoping that stuff can be ported over to Mr. And, and, you know, working great. So here we go. Mega Man X, the, you know, it's not a special chip game. The other two are. They're CX4. Um, let's, let's check this out real quick. Like I said, 1080p Mega Man X. The one thing I do want to mention um, before we jump into the other game is uh, I did test out Super Mario World on the previous uh, core. And Super Mario World's one of those games that I've always tested for for input lag with any means of playing the game because I'm just so familiar with it. The day the game came out with the Super Nintendo, myself and a friend, uh, we played the game until we beat it. We beat it the same day. And it's just been a game ever since that I have played numerous times every year and have beaten every year multiple times just because I love it so much and it's just, you know, a lot of nostalgia for that game. Um, and I can definitely feel if something is off. <laughs> the one great thing is playing it on Mr. Oh my god, it's just like playing it on the Super NT or just playing on original hardware. You know, that perceived input lag is really not there. Like, it just feels like I'm playing on original hardware. And that is a huge thing for a lot of people. And I think that's kind of understated a little bit, especially in some of my videos where I've talked about this. That is huge. Input lag is so minimal. Um, other, you know, you're gonna get, I think people have told me it's like oh, two frames, something. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's pretty damn good compared to other means of playing. I don't know the specifics at this moment. Plus whatever your TV, you know, introduces. But for me playing versus on, a, you know, the Super NT like I have right here, um, or playing on the Mister, it feels identical to me. So that is a great thing. So before we wrap it up, let me go ahead and test out this game that I was talking about where 
I loaded it up on the previous version of this core and there were issues with the graphics. Um, so that game is one of my all-time favorites. Very underrated, but it's another one of those damn games that went up in price because either it was just not many of them were around or people eventually discovered that they were uh, that it was a pretty good game. That's going to be Evo Search for Eden. I played this game way back in the day and have had you know multiple copies over the years of it. It's gone up in price drastically over just the past like five or six years. Um, and it's, it's a game where, you know, if somebody said, yeah, it's great, check it out, and you just play like the first area, you might be like, this is slow and boring and just not give it a chance. But trust me, I mean, this game, it's hard to like, I tried streaming it once and it was, it was boring for me to stream because there's nothing really going on in the beginning and people really don't have the patience for that. <laughs> Um, but once you really get into it, you know, it's got role-playing game elements to it, uh, you know, different eras of time. You're going through evolving a creature and you can change body parts. There's tons of secrets, different, different ways to play the game, uh, different ways to attack things. Uh, you know, you start out as a fish and you can evolve like your, your dorsal fins and, and all that craziness. So it, it's really a good game. I, I, I can't speak highly enough of it. Uh, it's one of my favorites, but like I said, it just kind of starts out slow and some people just are like, ah, you know, but you got to give it a chance, man. It's one of those games where it's like, if you don't give it a chance, you'll be missing out. So this is going to be where I noticed the graphics glitch. As soon as I entered the first stage, the little fish, woohoo, I keep meaning to turn that off. The little fish had like little green blocks around him and this time it does not that is awesome. So those things were ironed out, whatever the issues were. I thought maybe it had to do with the game and, and how the sprite is set up because, um, like I said, you can you can gain points and evolve and change your body parts and that will change on the actual character. So I, saw, I thought maybe it had something to do with that. And now it's, there's no issue. There was like little green blocks everywhere. And I was like, ah, oh, this is disappointing. But like I said, it wasn't a, a public ready, uh, you know, core. So couldn't really complain. But yeah, I could see people playing this like, okay, I'm a little fish and I'm attacking jellyfish and then I'm eating this big roast in the ocean. What the hell is this game? And just toss the controller and be like, I'm playing this. But it's a really good game once you get into it. But I'm super glad to see it works. Don't want to take up too much more of your time here. Oh crap, I'm getting killed. But very sweet, um, you know, showcased how you can get this installed, ready to go. Make sure you have the newest uh, Mr. File. Plus, uh, look at, make sure you get that Super Nintendo core in there. Uh, we will have that tutorial video coming tomorrow. Really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Smash that like button, make sweet ass love to that notification bell. And with that said, guys, oh, don't forget to subscribe. That's, that's the other important thing. I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye bye and boom.